Sorry this fucking video took so long. <laughs> I'm a pretty huge fan of the Mario series, and I think it's obvious given the name of my channel. Despite that though, a lot of the games I played before this video were just Mario Kart, Party, or Sports games. So despite my chances to do so, I haven't checked out a lot of the mainline Mario games. I think it's pretty important to say which games I'll be including in the video. Mario 1, Lost Levels, 2, 3, Land, World, Land 2, 64, Sunshine, New Super Mario Bros, Galaxy, Mario Wii, Galaxy 2, 3D Land, New Mario 2, Mario U, 3D World, Odyssey, and finally the newest entry, Wonder. I'm not gonna include Yoshi's Island because anyone with a brain knows it's a Yoshi game, and Luigi U as well as Bowser's Sphere are more just side content rather than standalone games, which is why I don't include them. Outside of that though, I just can't be bothered covering them given I already have 19 games to go through. And by the way, I'm not trying to imply that my opinion is correct or anything. If you like any of the games I don't, or vice versa, then that's totally fine. More than anything, it just lets you see what kind of games I'm into. I didn't really grow up with any of these games except for New Super Mario Bros, so it's not surprising to me that I have a lot of unpopular opinions with these that'll probably get my house bombed. If I do see you talking shit in the comments, I'm gonna bully you both for the rest of you sane human beings. Enjoy the video. Let's get into shit already, I'm done wasting your time. Super Mario. One, two, and three. There's power in numbers. Nintendo, now you're playing with power. Each game sold separately. Super Mario Bros. Easily one of the most iconic video games of all time. And it's pretty easy to see why it became so popular. I mean, back then, games looked like this. Or this. Or, you know, this. You know, very simple games that usually wouldn't go much beyond the boundaries of the screen. But then right out the gate we have this. Pretty big leap. And it must have been crazy to see it scrolling, different level spanning, just a full on game. So let's see if it holds up nowadays. Super Mario Bros is a super simple game. As Mario, you can move left and right, jump, and hold the B button to sprint. But I often find that the controls are unwieldy. Mario feels a large bit too slippery and imprecise. You accelerate too slow and decelerate too slow. Not to mention that as soon as you're airborne, you can't move Mario as much. The stiff controls often lead to bumping into enemies easier, as well as making it harder to platform level to level. Like seriously, if the controls were better, this game would be a serious walk in the park. But with the terrible controls, it becomes way harder than it really should be. Thankfully, on your side, the power-ups, hidden blocks with question marks on them, and much less frequently bricks, are one of three different power-ups. There's the super mushroom, making you two towers tall, allowing you to crouch, letting you break bricks, and much more importantly, take an extra hit. If you have the super mushroom power-up, then each super mushroom you come across actually becomes a fire flower. The fire flower is a pretty unique addition, it retains the same bonus from the super mushroom with the added ability of letting you shoot fireballs. Though for some dumbass reason, you only turn into super mario if you grab the fire flower when you're small mario. Regardless of if you have the super mushroom or not, grabbing the star will make you temporarily invulnerable and kill anything on contact. You also flash all sorts of different colours while it's active, and you get a unique music track for it. The power-ups are all pretty useful in their own right, and they do make the game a lot more fun. But I feel that they're pretty underutilised here. Yeah, later on in the game, you'll often see that there's only around one power-up a level, which is kinda strange. And when they do appear, it's not uncommon that they'll be put in a stupid spot. That brings us to the level design. And my god is it apparent that this is the first game. While some of the level designs are fantastic, I found the first one to be consistently amazing. Worlds 4 to the very last are filled with absolute dark. Shit. And the fact that there is world 4 and beyond kinda results in shitty level progression. The last world is filled with the most bullshit level design I've ever seen. You'll constantly see an abundance of enemies, one block platforms, big gaps, and these bastards right here. The Hammer Bros. The Hammer Bros are the nail in the coffin that makes the last half of this game complete bullshit. But contrary to popular belief, they aren't always bad. Because when they're on the platforms, it's really not that hard to get past them. But when they're on the ground and there's no platforms for them to go onto, they become your absolute worst nightmare. They do two things. Less egregiously, they jump up and down. This is actually a good thing when there's platforms, considering you can just go under when they jump on the platforms above. Or when they're on the ground, this will become the bane of your existence. And the fucking hands. Don't even get me started. 
They'll throw like two of these a second and it is super obnoxious. It is diabolical that Nintendo let these guys be this overpowered. And it's funny because the Hammer Bros are infamous among Nintendo fans, but only because of this game. And I'd honestly rather that than be like this game ever again. But speaking of the Hammer Bros, why don't we talk about the enemies? There's 12 enemies in this game, but there's a bit of a discrepancy between two of them. Let's go one by one. The Goomba will walk back and forth and can easily be taken out with a stomp or fireball. The Koopa will walk back and forth and can easily be taken out with a stomp or fireball. You really never hear people complain about the strong similarities between these two, and for good reason. There's a lot of enemies in the Mario universe, and just having one similar enemy isn't that big of a deal. But in Mario 1, it's pretty dumb. Since there's only 12 enemies, and 5 of those appear often, the Koopa probably should have just been a completely different enemy. The Koopa does have the ability to kick its shell around after stomping on it, but I find that I rarely even use that ability in the first place. Thankfully, the Koopa isn't the only enemy, so let's talk about the Buzzy Beetle. The Buzzy Beetle will walk back and forth and can easily be taken out with the uh, See what I mean? Why does this game have three different enemies with almost the exact same function? But yeah, why is the only difference between these three that one can be kicked around and one can be kicked around in contact from fireballs? And you cannot tell me this was a hardware issue because Super Mario Bros. 3 has like 20 trillion enemies on the same console. Okay, I've rented about this long enough, let's continue. Paratroopers are Koopas again, but I'm actually fine with them considering they're airborne and can take an extra hit. They can also jump towards you sometimes, which is pretty cool I guess. Lakitus will follow you through an entire level, floating at the top of the screen and throwing spinies at you. Some people love to label these guys as annoying, but in this first entry, they're kind of pushovers. If you're running, the spinies they throw are always fall behind unlike other entries. Bullet Bills are introduced all the way in World 5, which is pretty cool. They get fired at a cannon and will travel in the direction they were firing constantly, regardless of if there's a wall in the way. Piranha plants reside inside of pipes and will pop in and out periodically. These guys are pretty damn ugly in the first game, but they later become red and green, turning into one of my favorite character designs in the series. Located in lava are potaboos, though if you're not gay as hell, they're called lava bubbles. They'll hop in and out of the lava to hit you, and they can't be killed by anything. Though to be honest, the fact that they're unkillable and mostly stationary makes me think of them more as obstacles than real enemies. And while we're on the subject of enemies that reside in castles, Bowser sucks. Taking place on a bridge over lava, the fight involves Bowser jumping, shooting fireballs, and in later fights throwing hammers like the Hammer Bros. But unlike the Hammer Bros, Bowser stays in the midair for like a century, so it's pretty damn easy to go underneath. What's worse is that this is the boss fight for each world, meaning you have to fight this guy a whopping 8 times. And for the first 7 times you fight him, you don't even get Peach, you just get this asshole. You'll never see me getting a game over to Bowser in this game. Oh yeah, since this was a game back in the 80s, it's kind of a given that it'll have a live system. And boy is it infuriating. I swear, throughout the entirety of the game I had about like 20 game overs. And unlike a newer game, so game overs send you back to the start of the level, getting a game over hit kicks you all the way back to the very beginning. Thankfully, there is a continue option, but not in the way you'd expect. Rather than it just being an option on the menu, holding A and pressing start will put you at the start of the world you got a game over in. But if you're playing it nowadays, you would never even know that, and I don't even think it says it in the instruction manual. If they wanted to have a continue feature, just have it on the main menu. But honestly, starting from the first world of the seventh, you likely won't even notice the difference. Because my god, do these worlds blend. Start to end, Super Mario Bros often just takes place on your regular ground stage. There are exceptions, like the underground castle stages, and even the water levels are good. Ironically, Mario controls better in those. And even the entirety of Worlds 3 and 6 take place at night. That's a fun change of pace. But out of the 32 levels hit, 19 of the Magicia Basic Overworlds with very little variety. Hell, even though I don't even like desert levels that much, I wish they were here to make the experience more interesting. And it doesn't help at all that some of the levels were rehashed. Yep, they even went there. 5, 3, and 6, 4 are almost completely copied over from 1, 3, and 1, 4 respectively. Really? The only difference is that they're harder, which I appreciate. I mean, they could have easily just done the same level. But you couldn't make two more new levels? You could have even changed them beyond making the platform smaller and adding a few more enemies. I wouldn't be fine with that. But not gonna lie, I kind of wish some of the actual levels were repeats. Because some fucking idiot over at Nintendo decided they were gonna add guess and check levels. 4, 4, and 7, 4. I mean, not that I liked World 4 and 7 to begin with, but they've been further stricken of their fun factor by adding these two levels. So what's the deal with these two levels? Well, let me show you.
You saw that, right? I got teleported back to the start of the section. Well, as if the hammer bros weren't already a big enough fuck you. In these levels, you have to pick the right path. And the game never tells you this. You, you just have to realize that eventually you're circling the same area over and over again. What the fuck were they thinking with these? I just have to guess what path to choose until I get the right one. Oh, how fun- No, that's not fun! That's annoying as shit! I would rather get a game over than do these again. Well, no, that's a lie. But seriously, it just feels like they ran out of ideas with these. The last level is another guess and check level. And it's somehow worse than the other two since there's so many options to choose from. What's worse is that there's absolutely no power-ups in these levels. In fact, there's no coins either. And as if that wasn't enough, someone put one of these bastards near the end. And it's funny because it's harder to get past it than to get past the final battle, which is extremely disappointing. It's just Bowser again. Sure, he throws hammers, but so do the Bowsers from World 6 and 7. What they should have done is either give the hammers to only the final boss, or just make a new fight entirely. Because this might be one of the most anticlimactic endings to a game that I've ever seen. Luckily, after taking down Bowser, we have the option to select which world to start in, as well as the much more interesting feature of hard mode. It's the regular game, but Goombas are replaced with Buzzy Beetles, Elevator Lips are smaller, and most importantly, enemies move faster. This is a pretty fun mode, but I feel like it doesn't really do much to make it a true hard mode. To differentiate it more from the normal game, they should have just changed something major like removing power-ups and making each platform smaller. I, I don't know, that's just off the top of my head, but you get the idea. There's also another mode, and sadly it's a bit subpar. The two-player mode is really underwhelming. Rather than the usual multiplayer seen in the new Super Mario Bros games, in this one you just take turns. You see the other player play until they die and now it's your turn. That is the two-player mode. I know they couldn't feasibly make a simultaneous two-player option on the console like this, but you could easily get the same experience by just passing the controller to the next person when you die. Last thing to mention, the presentation. It's a, and I mean that in the nicest way possible, because to be fair, it's hard to get an amazing looking game on the NES, and they certainly tried their best here. Starting off with the positive side of things, we have the sound. The music in this game is pretty goddamn good given the hardware it's on. Tracks like the underwater theme and especially the iconic overworld theme are pretty great. The underground theme is pretty decent too, but I think the soundtrack is pretty forgettable outside those examples. Not like that's complaining though considering the songs I mentioned take up like half the soundtrack. But onto the less forgettable side of things we have the graphics. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, like this game's ugly. Like the Mario sprite itself. I think this sprite is so iconic at this point that many people overlook how ugly it really is. Like why is his mustache puke colored? It's nasty. But to be fair, it's not all bad. The bullet bill sprite looks nice, same with the Koopa, and, and it's kind of shocking how little the blooper design changed from here, they nailed it on the first try. The levels also look really good, but overall the presentation is kind of a mixed bag, which is honestly how I'd sum up the game as a whole. It's a big string of ups and downs. The highs of this game are pretty damn high for the console, and the lows, despite being bullshit, are nowhere near bad enough to be the worst game on the console. If you haven't played this one before, I'd go check it out. It's pretty good. I'm realizing just now that it's gonna be pretty fun to see the progression of these games, seeing the rough starts, low points, and the evolution of the series as a whole. And that's a pretty ironic statement considering the next game is... Yikes. Well, let's see if the next game is any good. Honestly, it's kind of impossible not to bring these two games up together since they're so similar. I mean, honestly, if you show these two side by side to someone not familiar with the franchise, they wouldn't be able to tell which is which. I'm then gonna keep my review short because this game is fucking garbage. First off, this game is somehow even more ugly than its predecessor. The soundtrack is the exact same, but almost every change in the graphical department was made for the worst. Why the fuck did the clouds have eyes? What happened here? And the ground just looks disgusting. The only part that's remotely good is the modern mushroom design comes from this game, but I wish it didn't because this game's fucking awful. The game runs with the exact same engine as the last one, which is already not a good sign. But the level design is equally shit, if not worse. The level design in the original game was not good, I'm, I'm not even gonna try to deny that. But in this game it's really, really bad. As early as 2-2 we start seeing invisible block puzzles, which despite everyone making this joke is straight out of Mario Maker. And oh thank god they brought back the guess and check levels. And they're even worse now because of the extra paths, yay. And the worst one, in fact one of the worst levels I've ever seen, is 3-4. It's a guess and check level, and you have to use an invisible block to progress. And these aren't even uncommon instances. While Luigi was in the previous game, he was really just a green Mario in retrospect. But here's where he gains his separate playstyle. But honestly, even though Luigi is usually just a better version of Mario, I think the opposite is true here. While this playstyle is meant to be a higher jumping but slower version of Mario, they go a bit too far with it here. It takes like a full 3 seconds to get to max speed, same with slowing down, and it really just makes the game absolutely unbearable to play. But if you haven't played the original game before, you should check it out. I think it's pretty good. As for this game, yeah, you should pass on it. I'm pretty excited to see the evolution of the series, especially since the next one is... oh fuck yeah. Probably my favourite of the NES titles. 
Let's see if it holds up. 